Hello, in this video we're going to talk about our ground station models and give you a little introduction on how it all interface, how it works, and how it could help support um, your unmanned efforts. Um, so here you can see we actually have two different models. Um, we have a 19 HDW, this is 19 inches HD widescreen. Um, has about 1200 NITs. These are sunlight viewable displays that we go with. We're headquartered in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. So, you know, a lot of sun. Um, we've done a lot of testing with these displays and it's sure to be very um, great in the viewing under the sun. Um, here you can see that we have the 19 inch and then we also have the dual screen model, which is two 10.1 inch Ultra HD displays. It has IPS technology, which is in-plane switching. So you can see um, great resolution from any angle. Um, our ground control systems have integrated controls. It's a 12 channel system with the HOTUS layout. HOTUS is hands-on throttle and stick, and we'll get into that in a moment. Um, nonetheless, we do have the interface designed on the software end, so you can assign channels and functions to the different switches, dials, joysticks, slides, uh, buttons that you prefer. Um, we have a pretty um, solid layout. We have a three axis joystick, which is Hall Effect, um, has two buttons on the top, momentary buttons. We have trim switches, where you can see roll, pitch, yaw, throttle, we have a six position switch here, which a number of our clients use for flight mode. And then we have three position switches, a guarded two position switch, a dial, a slide for the throttle, um, a payload joystick. This is two access hall effect with a dial. So we have a pretty diverse array of hardware that you can assign channels and functions to. We did do extensive research um, leading up to our designs and with our existing clients to design and offer the optimal switch array, though there is some flexibility with what we can do with the switch array um, that you can discuss with us. Um, so now the single screen display model and the dual display, uh, display model um, are very similar. Obviously you got two displays where um, one you can have as a PC and then the right display you can have as an analog feed. And on this analog feed you can actually see our on-screen display for that 12 channel interface. You can see yaw, pitch, roll, throttle, and then you have the different switch positions here that you can, you can um, see the different positions that you are in. This is our analog overlay. In our 19 inch version, we actually have a digital overlay within Windows. So we have a designed Windows application that allows you to do all the dial in for your aircraft, radio, autopilot, and overall, whatever your aircraft type is. Um, the dual screen version is very popular with our clients that do, that may want to feed video via analog. Um, analog receivers are still um, widely used. We actually have an, an internal bay here for any sort of video receivers. We have an SMA hub here that accesses the top SMA um, ports and you can essentially plug and play video receivers and it will um, overlay on this screen. Now, if you're not doing analog, streaming and you just want the second display to have be dedicated for let's say a specific windows application you can just change this to the hdmi input and it automatically extends the desktop to here um, where we succeed is the fact that we do have nice displays with the integrated controls um, you know usually in higher demanding applications you have a a, a, a plethora of da data streams, video streams, a number of different proprietary Windows applications. In those scenarios, the 19 inch HD widescreen might be your best option. If you wanna do analog streaming on the 19 inch, there are ways you can do that. It's very easy to install a um, RCA dongle 
and then uh, feed the analog video feed onto Windows. So that is possible through um, this model. Now, a little bit on HOTUS. So hands-on throttle and stick, the reason why we went with that layout um, many years ago when we started uh, designing these is mainly because it's just easier to fly. It's easier to operate when you have one joystick that has the three different axes and then you have throttle on a slide. Um, a lot of the handheld transmitters that have the two thumbsticks, they have rudder tied to throttle which makes it very difficult for um, new pilots or even existing pilots. It's, it's another, it's just not um, really designed for modern aircraft use in the defense, commercial aviation industry, military. They're very um, used to the HOTUS, hands-on throttle stick. So it's a very simple layout, um, very easy, mainly because forward is forward, back is back, left, right, and then you um, twist for yaw, and that will give you um, that function. Now, um, our ground stations have a 12 channel interface. Um, we also designed that interface to be able to interface with the different, uh, all the different radios and autopilots out there. And how do we do that? Well, we did that by um, designing our own GCS processor that's um, internal that will stream the different protocols that you will need to interface with a variety of radios and autopilots out there. Our systems can natively stream PPM, SBUS, serial protocols. Our ground stations are also recognized as two Windows gamepads in Windows. Now, our ground systems are not PC dependent. Um, since we did design our own GCS processor, you don't even need the PC turned on to um, still have all your controls in play. Now, this is a great um, fail-safe redundant type feature because if Windows goes out or, um, you know, how Windows can be sometimes, you know, you still have your controls in play. Um, that's the beauty of it. Uh, you have that additional redundancy where you're not dependent on a PC. Um, as far as the uh, radios go, we do offer uh, a very limited radios on our website, but it's absolutely not uh, limited to what you see on our website. We have many clients all through the world using their own preferred radio systems with our GCS platforms. Like I said, um, we can natively stream PPM, SBUS, and SIRA protocols. And it's fairly easy to um, install any sort of radios with our system, mainly because we designed um, very simple cables that will interface with your radio. Now, we do have some clients that, you know, may just cut one end and terminate it to whatever radio they're using. Um, nonetheless, uh, you know, all the RC type radios, those are um, compatible. We, we show on our website, TBS Crossfire. Um, RFD 900 is a very popular radio to stream um, controls and telemetry. Uh, you know, a number of our clients are also using digital MIMO radios. This one is set up to do uh, micro hard to Pico radio uh, MIMO communications. And in this communication link, uh, we have a micro hard radio um, installed with a RS-232 for our digital out on our controls going to the micro hard. Um, you know, you're giving it power. You have uh, SMA cables that run up or they can be on the switch panel and then you have the LAN cable. So that's really it for, to install the microhard. There is a lot of different settings that you will have to go through. We do have support documentation on our website or please contact us. We can um, provide you uh, documentation on how to get this stuff set up. Uh, we made it as painless as we can and possible. Uh, we're, we're always improving on our designs and the interface. Uh, the feedback we receive is that it is a very um, power, powerful interface 
mainly because also the integrated controls and being able to use really any type of radio system. If, if you're unsure, uh, uh, you know, contact us and we'll, we'll help you out and see, ensure that that radio interfaces. Uh, most autopilot systems, they're gonna take SBUS, serial commands, uh, a popular uh, autopilot Pixhawk, you know, a number of our clients have, use that. The vast majority use that autopilot, so that works, Veronti. All the ones that can accept those different control protocols. Uh, having integrated controls and interface, PC, all that video system all in one eliminates countless pre-flight um, procedures that you may need if you have a laptop and a bunch of wires, uh, you know, an RC transmitter, uh, cabling going through that, uh, cabling going through your antenna system now. So all that is essentially taken care of. You just turn on, you, you just press the on button, the system turns on, uh, windows will come up. Uh, you can output the analog view through a port, um, like I mentioned, with a, with a dongle. Uh, nonetheless, it's, it's highly um, interfaceable with all the different uh, products out there. Now, our systems right now are currently being powered through AC power. We include an AC adapter with each of our ground systems, um, but obviously we also have, you can run the ground stations off of pure battery packs. Uh, the ones that we recommend and include are uh, lithium ion packs, they're 4S, 5200 milliamps. Um, so as long as it's at least a 4S, you can actually plug in your own packs. Um, so these two together, you're getting um, about 10.4 amp hours uh, which is giving you, which can get you up to upwards to an hour and a half, depending on what you have plugged in, what radios you have plugged in. Uh, but, you know, we designed two parallel ports. Well, what you can do is, since you have two packs in here, you can just take one of the packs out, put in a fresh one, take the other pack out, put in a fresh one, all uninterrupted. Now, if you have battery packs plugged in, you can pull the AC out of it and there's it's all uninterrupted power um, so right now it's running off the two packs that we have plugged in and then plug it back in it's going to look towards the AC uh, power supply so hot swapping you can essentially run these systems for hours we have clients that run these systems 12 plus hours straight even longer um, very very durable uh, our systems are used in all climates in all parts of the world um, and it's it's designed very robust in the outdoors um, settings we have for the hotter climates we do have a ventilation system designed uh, where it's pushing air through the internals through the key components that may get a little hot and, and then push all that air out our embedded PCs are technically designed as fanless. We use OnLogic, which is a supplier out of uh, the Northeast in the United States. Uh, high quality industrial computing, that's the name of their game. All of our systems have their embedded PCs in them and um, very highly reliable. Uh, we are in um, a number of different militaries, defense companies all around the world and we do get reports um, if they see anything we're quick to to make sure everything is straightened out um, we have had these systems out for a number of years uh, we're, we're a couple generations in so our systems are fairly mature um, but nonetheless uh, we're gonna have Eric here now talk about the um, aircraft that we have and kind of how we interfaced with them Hey guys, so our ground stations are, uh, they work with a, a number of different um, types of radios and auto or autopilots. Um, currently here we have a hexacopter um, that's running DJI NASA um, and we're using Dragon Link on there. Um, we also have a right wing Z3 wing um, that is actually running an Eagle Tree Vector and um, Crossfire. Uh, we also use 5.8 gigahertz uh, analog video on here and uh, 1.3 on our wing. Uh, we're also working with a couple different um, digital FPV systems and of course um, 
the digital radios as well. And then our, uh, you know, we're, you're not limited to um, air vehicles. You know, we do we do multi rotors. We'll do fixed wing. Um, we have clients using uh, VTOLs, um, but you know, also there's you know the the marine based um, unmanned systems, the the land based um, unmanned systems. You know, our our ground stations really are. It's just a robotic controller that you know can work with you know you know whatever it is that you're using. Okay, so with our Windows Smart View, um, we call our GCS interface Smart View. On our Windows version, you can see here, um, this is the introductory screen. Um, you know, you have rates, you can change the rates of your controls, and you actually have model memory. So all the different models that you may have that may be slightly different or using a different communications link, um, our clients find it useful to switch between vastly different models um, through our interface. So here uh, you can kind of see our on-screen display that is showing you the percentages of throw, the different controls that we have, and um, the movements each of the controls are giving you. And then here's channel settings where you can pick, you know, throttle, aileron, elevator, all, all the different channels um, to, to set. So you can set the travel, the direction of the servo, rates, expo, trim, the sign control. And here is where, um, you know, you can actually just select the drop down if you want to stream PPM, serial, PPM, and serial, and then the different formats. Because, you know, serial, there's different formats. Uh, we use uh, the microhards, so that's the airborne innovations format for serial that we stream natively. But you can also do SBUS, which um, a number of you guys will be familiar with. Um, but essentially, our uh, our interface, you can do really everything you can do with a handheld, but without all the garbage. Um, and, un and useless code that you don't need for modern UAV or commercial defense aircrafts. Um, a lot of the handheld stuff, it, it is geared towards ho hobby enthusiasts in the RC world, but we learned a lot from that world and um, took the best from that. So uh, this is all developed in-house that we've done. You know, lastly, we designed field stands uh, for our ground systems they are quick deployment, heavy duty, lightweight. Uh, really, you just pop the legs out of these holders and then they just slip right into to these uh, cups we designed. And then the ground station, you just drop it right in and you're done. Then you got a, you got a, a, a nifty stand here that's um, pretty heavy duty. Um, but with that said, uh, thanks for listening to us. Uh, please contact us, we'd love to hear from you and communicate with you on how you can uh, push your programs forward. Thank you.